Welcome to another lesson in the TI30X Plus MathPrint student course. In this lesson, we explore the order of operations used by the calculator, including a selection of useful tips. Let's start with a simple example. 4 plus 6 times 2. The calculator generates an answer of 16. 6 times 2 is computed first, and then 4 is added. Let's try the same calculation, this time placing parentheses around the multiplication. Once again, we get 16. Now let's try the parentheses around the 4 plus 6. This time, we get 20. The parentheses forces the addition to occur first. The multiple line display of the calculator allows us to compare all three calculations at the same time. The first two answers are the same because of the order of operations. It states that multiplication will be calculated before addition. So the parentheses are redundant in the second calculation. Indeed, this is one of the reasons why the order of operations were introduced. An attempt to reduce excessive use of parentheses. Now let's see what happens if we swap the multiplication out for division. Arrow back up to the first calculation. Select the input and press enter. The overstrike cursor is displayed, so placing it over the multiplication signs means we can just press the division key. No need to navigate to the end of the expression, just press enter. The division is calculated first. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so the calculation becomes 4 plus 3 to get the result of 7. So far, all of this should be familiar. Parentheses first, then multiplication and division from left to right, followed by addition and subtraction from left to right. But what about exponents? Let's try 10 plus 2 cubed. The exponent is calculated first. 2 cubed is 8, so the result is 18. What about 10 plus 2 to the power of 3 plus 4. The 3 plus 4 is in the exponent, so we need to know what 3 plus 4 is first. So our calculation is the same as 10 plus 2 to the power of 7. Now this is a useful example, as it helps us understand what 2 to the power of 3 squared might be. We're raising 2 to the power of some number, so we need to evaluate that quantity first. Well, 3 squared is 9, so our expression is the same as 2 to the power of 9. Let's take a moment to switch off the math print mode. We'll do a similar calculation in 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 2. This linear representation lacks a bit of detail in comparison to our two-dimensional world of math print. Now exponents will be calculated in order from left to right. That means we have 2 cubed, which is 8, then squared, which is why we get 64. It's not that the order of operations has changed. The linear representation required by some digital platforms, like spreadsheets, necessitates some additional parentheses to be placed in order to force the operations into the order that we want. There's a lot more detail about this in our next video. Still on exponents, what about negative 2 squared? If the intention is to multiply negative 2 by negative 2, then we'd need to write negative 2 inside the parentheses. Let's see what happens if we leave the parentheses out. This might seem strange at first, but we can illustrate using some algebraic representation. I'll store negative 2 in x. Now calculate x squared. The quantity x has been multiplied by itself. Now let's try negative x squared. That means we square the quantity x and then include the negative sign. This is like our first example where we had 2 squared and then put the negative sign on. That's all for this lesson. In our next lesson, we'll take a look at the importance of the vinculum 
in order of operations, particularly in calculations around scientific notation. Thanks for watching. See you next time.